Yeah. We are in my room, in my bedroom, and this is my book collection. These are all just like photo albums and photo books, but these are all the English books I have. I also have more books here, but these are all the ones I've already read and they're in Czech. Here I have some more. These are more maybe like educational or something. And then these are some like old classic ones here. I don't know what these are doing here, but I also read them. I think they're just because they didn't fit up here. There's other the ones I haven't read either that are in check because I always buy books in like bulk because I have some, I have a way of doing this and I haven't had time to read these and also the English ones. So I was thinking I could show you all the books in English that I bought. I think it was this summer. Yeah, it was this summer and I haven't read them yet. I don't know why. So I'll have to no I read I read this one this one I read you've reached Sam I really like this book it was interesting and I think quite unexpected so that's what I read in the summer excuse me all of these I'm gonna take down now this I also read I feel like I'm I'm lying a little bit here I did read some of these I am lying this I also read this no 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 these i will show you later <laughs> this one i read i think huh i think i read this i don't remember but i think and then this one i read this one it's a mess this one i read years ago i bought this one on a canadian airport when i was going to a lacrosse championship word championship to canada and this one is so beautiful like it has these like rough uncut edges and just the whole book is beautiful these and these okay so we have how many one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve i'm gonna show them to you and talk about them individually so let's do it okay so i had a plan <laughs> for this video i wanted to use the nice natural daylight light <laughs> lighting because it was beautiful outside today it was very sunny and very pretty but i didn't get to film it early filmic i didn't get to filming early enough because i got a headache i took a painkiller and i was waiting for it to you know kick in because i have a problem with migraines and i didn't want to get it i didn't want to get it to that point so i have my books right here like i said i have i think 13 two four six seven yes no 12 12 i thought it was 13 well it doesn't matter most of these books are from like i said from the summer when i did like a bulk buy again because the books in a certain bookstore were on sale and i had something like a voucher so i wanted to use it and they were selling english books because usually they do these kind of promotions only for czech books or not czech books but books translated into czech and i think i said it somewhere in the last video or something where i got a little bit frustrated or a little bit annoyed with Czech translations of books because I did see if it was English like the original language I did see kind of the original language behind it I don't really know how to explain it so I wanted to start reading in the original language which is even good for me because I practice English but a couple of them I have from other places this one in particular let's start with this one it's called Faux by I don't know what how to pronounce this it's i guess ian reed i'm gonna say ian reed maybe it's not correct so i'm sorry this book i think it had some other like cover over it but i probably lost it because i bought this book in canada not at the airport i think but it was in like a dollar store or some place like that because we don't have those in the czech republic or at least we didn't use to a couple of years back when I did go to Canada and it was like the first time for me to go into a store like that but I actually never finished it you can see my bookmark I think it's kind of like halfway through the book I think the problem was that I was reading it at a time where I didn't speak English I don't want to say perfectly because I don't I still don't speak it perfectly my English was on a lower level and so I didn't really I think I had a harder time reading this book I still remember me like underlining some words with a pencil and writing a translation like for example this double page please focus I'm gonna try here focus here please I mean when I look at these words I still don't know a lot of them a word hunk 
or stew I know now gravy I also know now alleviate I think I also know what that means now so I was still underlining and translating some books and it wasn't really a fun way to read because I did have to have my phone on me and like keep translating and it would stop me while I was reading the book so I couldn't really get into it that much but I really wanted to try I think it was interesting because the story well I can't tell you exactly because it's been years and I never actually finished the book but it was I think a woman was living with her husband on a farm or some place like that and some strange person came knocking at the door and saying that the husband has to go with him or he was giving him a choice to go on some sort of a mission I don't know I might read it someday to actually understand the plot and I should make these fast because we have a lot more books to go through these two books I bought second hand in my favorite bookstore in Madrid. It's a store called Secret Kingdoms. It's a store owned by an English person. He has these like normal new books at the front of the store or like the majority of the store. And then he has this little room in the back it's not that little he has these like old vintage chairs in the back some cookies and drinks and there are the he calls it pre-loved books which I love <laughs> and there you can buy the books for an amazing price and I think those books are only in English or at least like a lot of books there is in English I go there pretty often and when I saw these two I they were just so pretty and I wanted to try to read like an older book because now I feel like I do have enough level of English that I mean I still wouldn't understand a lot of stuff probably but I would be able to read it anyways the blue one is Kenilworth by Scott is there not a full name and just mm. It also has like the uncut pages or like roughly cut pages and just I mean look I have to be really careful because this one has been taped together and so here it says Kenilworth published in the United States of America in 1956 it doesn't really say the full name of the author it has to somewhere right oh by Sir Walter Scott the smell is just indescribable and the second one is called the way of all flesh by samuel butler which i've heard this name before i mean the inside's kind of similar to the other one it's an old book but it, it's just so pretty like it has such a different feeling and i don't know if i'm gonna like it but i really really wanted to try to read an old book this one is from the year it's from the 19th century but there's a whole paragraph talking about how this book came about and when the author was working on it but I'm not going to read the whole thing so we're just gonna leave it with the 19th century and then we have I think besides this one all of these I bought this summer this one is called find me which I also started reading years ago and never finished I was also halfway in the book like why do I never finish these books and this one has like big letters. It should be really easy to read. And I feel like this one I also bought at the Canadian airport. Is that possible? I think it is. Oh, I didn't say the, the author. It's Andre Aciman. I really don't know how to pronounce this. And it says it's from the author of Call Me By Your Name which I've also heard about and I didn't know it's that old. I mean, it's not old, but I bought this book. It might have been four or five years ago. And this one is from... Why are there no dates on these books? The first page says, Para mis tres hijos, which in English is for my three sons or kids, depends. Okay, never mind. So it's five years ago. And I guess when I was buying the book, it was new. I should read this too. Family of Liars. It's apparently the prequel to the number one New York Times bestseller, We Were Liars. I, you know, I always have a problem with like sequels, prequels and all that because I know it's controversial, but I have the book series called After. I discovered that whole series back on Wattpad, I think, or I didn't discover it there. I was just reading it there because I think I saw this clip of maybe the actor, I think it was even Noah Centineo, where he was in a clip and it was talking about this book I guess it was just some fan edit or somebody doing this clip for fun because it wasn't a trailer for the movie because it was way back before the movie was even being made so for the first time I read it on Wattpad and I don't use Wattpad but it was only available there back then and then they actually printed it in physical books so I got the books in English and then I think they were making the movies why did I start talking about this in the first place oh I know I also got 
about the last book, which is called Before, that I still haven't read yet. And I think it's focused on more of Hardin's life, the main character, before the main drama of the books, and then also his stepbrother. I think. These books I never know if to read them, if they still have something to do together. John Green says that E. Lockhart is one of our most important novelists on the cover. I think I read almost all of John Green's books unless he wrote a lot of books in the last... oh my god. Well, you know, there might be a couple of books that I haven't read. But in my younger years when I was a teenager, which sounds so stupid to say because I'm only 21, just years ago when I was reading he was really one of my favorite authors and my mom would give me all his books always and then I think I just have one of his books in English because back then I was reading only in Czech what is this book about welcome to the Sinclair family we do not crumble even when our loves betray us we do not falter even when we lose one of our own we do not break even when there's blood on the sand perhaps that is all you need to know except that we were always liars discover how our story ends from the author of the global bestseller so i don't know if it's better to read this book first or the other one first i'm just gonna have to google that i guess another book called small pleasures by claire chambers this book has such a pretty cover and i really like i don't know if you can see it on the camera but like the first cover page is shorter and then here where it kind of like the other page ends they have these not quotes it's just one word review from some other people i don't know who these people are and it says wonderful by richard osman beautiful by jesse burton and witty and sharp by david nichols and it won some women's prize for fiction in 2021 or was long list it was long listed i don't know what this green stamp means and the times apparently said remarkable small pleasures is no small pleasure about this book 1957 the suburbs of southeast london jean swinney is a journalist on a local paper trapped in a life of duty and disappointment from which there is no likelihood of escape when a young woman gretchen tilbury contacts the paper to claim that her daughter is the result of a virgin birth it is down to jean to discover whether she is a miracle or a fraud as the investigation turns her quiet life inside out jean is suddenly given an unexpected chance at friendship love and possibly happiness but there will in inevitably be a price to pay that is very intriguing then we have the comfort book by matt haig he's the author of the middle library which i read year two years ago and i really like that book and it's just so small like look at this and so pretty the comfort book is a collection of consolations learned in hard times and suggestions for making the bad days better drawing on maxims memoir and the inspirational lives of others these meditations offer new ways of seeing ourselves and the world this blue really reminds me of the midnight library if you know you know when in rome by sarah adams author of the cheat sheet you know this cover it reminds me of the cover what are they called cover pages or the covers of the books i see in the kindle unlimited app a lot like i don't know if it's just an algorithm that they're showing me these type of books but it looks really similar to everything they've been offering me so far and what i'm thinking is you know when i was doing the stuff my kindle day from amazon and i was downloading all these books for free i feel like i might have downloaded this one i didn't even know i already had it emilia rose is burned out from years of maintaining her public image as pop princess ray rose inspired by her favorite audrey hepburn film roman holiday she drives off in the middle of the night for a break in Rome. Rome, Kentucky, that is. Running the pie shop, his grandmother left him. Noah Walker is busy enough as it is. But after finding Amelia on his front lawn in her broken down car, he decides to let her stay in his guest room on a very temporary basis, of course. As the two of them grow closer, Noah starts to see a new side to Amelia, kind-hearted and goofy yet lonely from years in the public eye. Amelia may have to go back to her life someday, but for now she's perfectly happy falling in love with the cozy small town she's found herself in. And her grumpy tour guide isn't half bad either so i guess it's just like a romance book i would say perfect to read in the summer you know it reminds me the baking <laughs> reminds me of a book i read years ago that was called the smell of an adjective bread this book is very exciting because it's called the first to die at the end by adam silvera silvera i have a book 
that's called they both die at the end i don't know if i realized when i was buying this book that i had the other one and that they probably have something in common but i think i was googling it to see if one of them is the first one out of a series or something and i can't remember oh again it says prequel to smash hit they both die at the end what what do people have with these prequels? And I don't know what it means. Like, is it gonna talk about the life of the two main characters of the other book? Orion Pagan has waited years for someone to tell him that he's going to die due to his serious heart condition. But now that he's signed up to death cast, he's ready to begin living. Getting an end day call is the last thing on Valentino's prince's mind. He has a long and promising future ahead of him and he's excited to spend the night at the death cast launch party. When Orion and Valentino cross paths, their bond is under but after the very first death cast calls go out the boys lives are changed forever one of them receives a call and the other doesn't that literally sounds like the other book i don't get it i'm gonna have to google that later too it says it's a prequel but it just sounds like the other book but this one is way bigger and thicker i mean it has it looks like it's double spaced or at least you know like more space than usual books and it has a pretty big font too so i guess maybe that's why it's so thick Ooh, this one i don't remember it's pink it's called you see no <laughs> see you yesterday by rachel lynn solomon an award-winning author of today tonight tomorrow Barrett Bloom is hoping college will be a fresh start after a messy high school experience. But when school begins on September 21st, everything goes wrong. She's humiliated by the know-it-all in her physics class. She botches her interview for the college paper and at a party that night, she accidentally sets a frat house on fire. She panics and flees. And when she realizes her roommate locked her out of their dorm, she falls asleep in the common room. The next morning, Barrett's perplexed to find herself back in her dorm room bed, no longer smelling of ashes and crushed dreams. It's September 21st again, and after a confrontation with Miles, the guy from Physics 101, she learns she's not alone. He's been trapped for months. When her attempts to fix her timeline fail, she agrees to work with Miles to find a way out. Soon, they're exploring the mysterious underbelly of the university and going on wild, romantic adventures. As they start falling for each other, they face the universe's biggest unanswered question yet. What happens to their relationship if they finally make it to tomorrow? That sounds very intriguing as well, and it reminds me of the, so the German movie. No, I think it's actually a Spanish movie, and I never knew. And it's, what is it called? Those are like three or four students who died, I think, when the school caught on fire, or there was some accident, maybe some party. They died. One of the people, I think, one, there was one girl who was pregnant and they were stuck I think inside of the university and they couldn't get to the other side and they didn't know why so this teacher can see them and hear them so he helps them make it to like the final exam of high school and when they finally make it they can get to the other side whatever you know the two characteristics of this video is bad memory and the inability to speak as you can see i couldn't even say this okay two more books this one is where the crawdads sing oh i've heard about this book a long long time ago i really wanted to read it so i bought it and let's see what it's about because i can't remember for years rumors of the marsh girl have haunted berkeley cove a quiet town on the north carolina coast so in late 1969 when handsome chase andrews is found dead the locals immediately suspect kaya clark the so-called marsh girl but kaya is not what they say sensitive and intelligent she has survived for years alone in the marsh that she calls home finding friends in the gulls and lessons in the sand then the time comes when she yearns to be loved when two young men from town become intrigued by her wild beauty kaya opens herself to a new life until the unthinkable happens and the new york times book review says painfully beautiful at once murder mystery a coming of age narrative and a celebration of nature again very pretty cover i really love that about books i know you're not supposed to judge the book by its cover but i love to do that and one last book by Colleen Hoover because she's been booming for a long time now. Actually, I don't know if she's still booming. I feel like there are other authors that are trending right now. But my sister read some of her books and I don't know if some friends have been talking about her to me. I don't really think so. I think I just saw it on social media. And this book is Confess. And I was thinking I might finally try one of her books. Oh, this is really long. Do I want to read this well i did it with most of the book and this is the last one so i might as well 
Auburn Reed has lost everything important to her. In her fight to rebuild her shattered life, she has her goals in sight and there is no room for mistakes. But when she walks into a Dallas art studio in search of a job, she doesn't expect to find a deep attraction to the enigmatic artist who works there, Owen Gentry. For once, Auburn takes a chance and puts her heart in control, only to discover that Owen is keeping a major secret from coming out. The magnitude of his past threatens to destroy everything Auburn loves most, and the only way to get her life back on track is to cut Owen out of it. To save their relationship, all Owen needs to do is confess. Ooh, here comes the name of the book. But in this case, the confession could be much more destructive than the actual sin. In her magnificent and exceptional style, Colleen Hoover delivers once again a deeply moving story about how true love and family are ties that can never be broken. That concludes all of the books. I'm just gonna put it down here so it doesn't fall. I'd like to say that I will read these books very soon, but I know that would be a lie because I am going on Erasmus, as you know, and I think I might take a couple of these books, like for example, the comfort book, because that one is really small and I think I can take it no problem. Maybe the small pleasures too, because this one is really intriguing to me and I really, really want to read it. I'm going to take probably a couple, so I have at least some physical ones, but I really don't know when I'm going to read all the other books and the Czech ones I haven't read that I have on my shelf that I showed in the beginning. I think I'm gonna get to doing that probably probably when I come back from university abroad <laughs> because I'm not gonna take them with me and I always think I can read it while I'm home over the winter or over the summer but somehow I never get around to that or at least I read maybe one or two and then I get caught up in I don't know, spending the summer doing a lot of activities, I guess swimming or working or all the other stuff I do and can't remember right now. So those were my books that I haven't read that I have in my home library, I guess. And I hope maybe you got intrigued and inspired by some of them and you will read them. Then you can let me know if it's worth a read. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!